All right, I'm going to go ahead and give you this tutorial on how to add smoke to our tractor project. This is the same tractor project that we have already done in our class. We've got the three layers that we imported. We've got the three layers down here that have all been tied to this parent layer that is a null object that I called all layers. And as we look at this, I can go ahead and run this animation, just hitting the space bar. And there goes that wonderful little tractor heading on into that ditch. Oh, it gets a little low in there, it looks like, but that's all right. All right, one of the things I think we could do to this tractor is that we can add maybe just a little bit of exhaust smoke out of here. Now, this is going to be really basic. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, there's some pretty cool ways of doing this. Now, when we think of exhaust, when we think of a lot of things in nature, in fact, we're really thinking about particles. And After Effects has the ability to do particles, and we're going to use that effect called particles in the creation of this exhaust smoke. What I want to do, though, is I want to create a new composition. Now, the composition, we can think of this composition as being really just the same thing as a sequence in Premiere. I'm going to just call this smoke, just for fun. And I'm going to use the same size of uh, composition as we used in the previous project, which was 1280 by 720. And you can see what I have down here. I still have my tractor, but I also have this new composition. And really all this is just a timeline in Premiere. You can see right now my smoke composition is just totally black. Uh, we're going to add a new solid layer to that. I'm going to right click down in here, select new, solid. And with this, I'm just going to add just a solid color. Not too worried about what kind of color it is or anything like that. I'll just hit OK to accept the default. It's called Black Solid 1. It takes up the whole space, but who cares? What's really important is that we go over here to the effects. Now, if you don't see effects, come up here to Window and select Effects right here. Effects and Presets for me. And in here, we're going to search. There's a lot of effects, tons of effects we could use. But we're going to search for Particle. We have three to choose from, CC Particle Systems 2, CC Particle World, and Particle Playground. We're going to go ahead and just go for Particle World. There's others to choose from, but we're going to go with Particle World. I'm just going to drag and drop this right down here on this black solid layer. And I'm going to drill this black solid layer down, and you see now we have this new thing, which we haven't seen before, called Effects. I'll drill that down. We have the CC Particle World. Drill that one down, and now I have all of the different settings I can put for this particle system. Now, the defaults are here, and I can run this just by hitting the space bar. Hey, it's fireworks time! Wonderful! It's the 4th of July! Okay, that's enough of that. But really, that's just particles. So, just like fireworks or flames coming out of this thing, whatever you might call it, welding torch, whatever you want to say. Uh, really, these are all just little individual lines. If you look at these, they're all different colors few different lengths, but they're all coming out of this thing. This thing in this particle system is called a producer. It's what produces the particles, and they all flow out from there. And they're all affected by gravity as well. And all of these different settings, we have the ability to change. The first thing I want to do is I want to change the particle itself. So I'm going to come down here on the lower left, drill down the particle area, and particle type I'm going to change to shaded sphere. Shaded sphere, now you can see I'll run this. Now they're just kind of spheres coming out of there. It still doesn't look a lot like smoke. We can still make some changes to that, though, I'm sure. We're going to change the colors, because smoke is not yellow and orange. So we'll change the birth color. The birth color is the color of the particles as they come out of the producer. And the death color is the color of the particle right before it dies, quote unquote. So you can imagine that the producer gives birth to these individual particles. They live for a certain amount of time, and then they die. And that's it. We can change the birth size as well, the death size. Right now we're going to leave that alone though, and I'm going to just undrill down that particle. We also want to change physics. Right now this is being affected by gravity, which is pulling these particles down, and we don't want them to be pulled down. And furthermore, this is being exploded out of the producer, which is a result of this animation part of physics. We don't want it to be explosive. We want to go with a direction axis, which will cause all of the particles to come out in one direction. As I hit the space bar, you can see now I've got all these things coming out, almost like water coming out of a hose. Now, if we get rid of this gravity here, right now it's at 0.5, if I just click that and hit zero so that there's no gravity, and I hit the space bar, you can see now they're all coming out one direction. That sounds like a band name. I might have to start a band and call it One Direction if it's never been done before. Oh well. We might want to change the birth rate just a little bit. The birth rate, just like people being born in the world, 
is the amount of particles that are given birth in a certain amount of time. As we increase the birth rate, you can see that we end up with more particles. We can even get lots and lots of particles in there. And as we increase the longevity or decrease the longevity, it uh, decreases the amount of time that these particles live. I'm going to go ahead and hit the space bar. You can see we're getting closer and closer to this actually looking like smoke. Still, you can kind of tell the individual ball shapes, but uh, that's okay. Still looks a lot like smoke as of right now. All right, I'm going to go ahead and now drill down this producer area. And we want to change the radius, not the position. We want to change the radius of the X component to zero and the radius of the Z component to zero as well. Doesn't have much of an effect as we look at it, but it does help. So we'll go ahead and leave that alone. Now you can see that this looks a lot like smoke. We can still change this though. Let's pull this down, the producer. We'll go back to particle now, mm -hmm. drill that down. And we're going to adjust the birth size and the death size. As we bring the birth size down, you can see we're making these a lot smaller. And the death size we can bring down quite a bit as well. Make it look like individual little particles. The size variation percentage though, let's go ahead and increase that so that these uh, particles are all different sizes. And the maximum opacity, I'm going to go ahead and bring that down just a little bit as well. You can see now we're starting to really look a lot like smoke. It's not perfect, but I'm going to go ahead and go with it because it, for our class, it's not really that big a deal that it looks absolutely perfect. And I'm going to go with saying this is close enough. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command S on my Mac or Control S on a PC, which would save the project. And now I'm going to just go over here to my tractor composition. And up here, I'm just going to get rid of this effect controls by Xing here. And now I'm back to my project area. And this smoke composition, which is what I've just been creating down here, is something now I can add to my tractor composition as another layer. So essentially all we're doing now is we're taking what we created in this smoke composition, which is just this trail of kind of smoky looking stuff. That composition lives by itself and we can add it all self-contained as a new layer here. And you can see that as I play this tractor composition, you can see, you can kind of barely see it here, but uh, there is this kind of exhaust smoky looking stuff just kind of just coming right out of the middle of the screen. Now it's coming right out of the middle of the screen because when I go over here to the smoke composition, that's what it's doing here as well. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rotate that so that it's coming out toward the top of the frame. And we know how to do that. We'll drill that down. We'll hit the transform. And this rotation, will select the degrees, not the 0x, but the 0.0, .0 degrees. We're going to rotate that right about 90 degrees, give or take a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and back this tractor up just a little bit so it's a little easier to see. Now, we've talked about how we can make a layer a child of another layer that becomes the parent. And whatever happens to the parent also happens to the child. We can do that with this smoke layer as well. So we're going to make this smoke layer a child of the tractor layer so that as the tractor moves, the smoke moves the same way relative to that tractor. So I'm just going to grab this little toilet swirly kind of whirlpool looking thing, drag it on down to the tractor layer. And by doing that now, I've made this smoke layer a child of the tractor layer. The effect that it has now is that as that tractor moves, that smoke is going to move in exactly the same way. All of the keyframes that happen to that tractor will be the exact keyframe movements that are in that smoke as well, which is good, except that the smoke is kind of still coming out of this area up here. I need to get that aligned with the exhaust pipe. And I can do that just by changing the position of that smoke layer, because changing this position is always going to change it relative to the tractor. So as I move this position to the left by changing that X coordinate, I can just drag that down. Looks like I've grabbed the anchor point for some reason. I'll stop doing that. I'll uh, grab this position and I'm going to go ahead and rotate it just a little bit more so that it's kind of right in line with that tractor. Move the position just a little bit more on the X and a little bit on the Y as well, just to bring that down. And you know what, before I do that too much, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rescale it because it's a little too wide and I'm finding it, it's just going to be easier just to skinny this up using the X, the Y scale. It's the vertical scale since we've rotated this 90 degrees. And by unlinking the scale, I can affect the vertical scale 
independently of the horizontal scale. That's why there's these two numbers here. So as I decrease that vertical scale, you can see that it has the effect of making that smoke much skinnier. And as I move it just a little bit more to the left, I'm about right now, I think. Let's go ahead and test it out. You can see that my kind of exhaust smoke looks a little weird. Looks a lot like oil spurting out of that exhaust pipe, which is probably not good for the tractor. But you get the idea. We could totally make some changes to that particle system and really make this look like smoke. Now you can see that that is rotating with the tractor because that smoke is a child. And of course it's going off my little screen there, uh, but that's okay. You get the idea. So it's all about creating that particle system, adding it to that solid color in that new composition, and then you add the composition to that individual, uh, as an individual layer on that tractor composition, make it a child and a parent relationship, they go together, and it's just absolutely fine. Let me know if you have any questions on this. I'm happy to help you and uh, get you to a point where you've got some good things going on with this, and this is just the beginning. And I look forward to hearing from you.